So now we've seen the the opposition towards the liberal reforms that Alexander II implemented during his reign. We're going to look now at the radical opposition to Alexander II and also at his assassination. Okay, and his assassination. Go right that big. His assassination. Okay, so we're going to look at first at radical thinkers and then we'll have a look at the spread of opposition and how these oppositions organise themselves to um, lead to the death of the Tsar. So radical thinkers began to influence young educated Russians. Don't forget, the educated Russians are where uh, at universities, at independent universities. At independent universities, we start to see we start to see radical ideas sort of spreading and forming. And these thinkers influence people to adopt socialist ideas. And we've got examples of a couple here. We have Nikolai Chervinsky, uh, Cher Chernshevinsky, shall I say. It's very hard, very long words. Uh, editor of the Radical Journal and author of the book, What is to be Done? Uh, spread the view that peasants have to be made revolutionary leaders Okay, and um, this book here, What is to be Done, is very important in what's going to happen later on in Russian history because this influenced the Russian Revolution. Influenced the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution specifically. Oops. Bolshevik Revolution. But... We're not getting onto that for a little bit, so spoilers for now. Uh, we also have Alexander Herzen, who was the editor of the journal The Bell, uh, which advocated a new peasant-based socialist structure. So this is a very; these are all socialist ideas. Socialist ideas: the idea of the the workers gaining control of the means of production. And these are very much uh, Marxist ideas and ideas that have been influenced by Marx and other thinkers like that uh, in history. And we also have Mikhail Bukunin, who was an anarchist and a socialist who suggested private ownership of land should be replaced by collective ownership. So this is a very socialist, communistical idea. So an anarchist is simply someone, uh, anarchy... Um, is somebody who uh, doesn't believe in the state. Doesn't believe in the state. So doesn't believe a, that we need a state. So the country should have no government, the state. And anarchist thinking has been, was always controversial back in the day. Um, famous philosophers like uh, Thomas Hobbes and John Locke and, and Rousseau uh, believed that anarchy and a state like that would just lead to uh, what Hobbes believed was a, a state of nature, a state of war and pain, which isn't exactly what um, is what is what is needed. And he also, the, the belief that the private ownership of land should be replaced by collective ownership. Now, this is very important because before his death, Karl Marx believed and just simply said that communism is an ab abolition of private property. So communism, communism, abolition, abolition of private property. I'm just going to call it PP, okay? And deep down, fundamentally, that is, that is what communism is. Obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but, and it's, basic level it is the abolition of private property and he also translated Karl Marx communist manifesto I also I think it should be uh, noted that it's Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels Engels he didn't just write it on his own communist manifesto into Russian in 1869 and then Das Kapital in 1872 both Marxist ideas, both Marxist thinkings. So the spread of oh my god, the spread of opposition uh, began to take shape in the eighteen seventies. 
So uh, Peter uh, Lavrov encouraged around 2,000 people to, quote, go to the people. These populists uh, dressed like peasants and tried to get support in the uh, peasant areas. They were known as uh, Narodniks, okay? And so this was the idea of trying to rouse support for a revolution from below. So trying, trying to get a revolution from below to get revolution revolution from below and by revolution from below we're talking about a peasant's revolt a peasant's revolution and this happened again in 1876 and also failed people didn't really take to these ideas and thinkings and then in 1877 we have the remaining populace establishing what's known as land and liberty, which is similar, ha had similar aims to these sort of these sort of uh, populists. However, with a commitment to assassinating, to assassinations. Okay, so land and liberty became a major threat for the Tsar and other members of the government. So. The assassination of General Mezemstev, who was the head of the third section. Remember the third section being the secret police. Uh, secret police. <coughs> Excuse me. He was assassinated in 1878. And then there were several assassination attempts on the Tsar himself. In total, there were seven assassination attempts on his life with the seventh slash eighth being the final one we'll talk a little bit about it in another uh, minute so we have another movement known as the black partition and then we have a movement called the people's will okay so these were subgroups of the land and liberty uh, opposition movement and it was split into again the black partition and the people's will the black partition was organized by a uh, georgi uh, Plek plekhanov plekhanov and was aimed to partition the black soil provenances among the peasants and spread radical materials however broke up in the early 1880s the people's will was a lot more was a lot more successful so uh, it was led by timothy uh, mikhailov and was a larger movement than the black partition and it's advocated the assassination against the czar and in march 1881 the czar was assassinated with a bomb whilst traveling to the winter palace in st petersburg this is a somewhat misconception so somewhat somewhat misconception so what should be known is in march 1881 there was an assassination attempt on his life where a bomb a bomb exploded uh in front of him so in front of his carriage okay in front of his carriage However, Alexander actually survived this attack. So this was the seventh assassination attempt. This is the seventh assass assassination attempt. Okay. And he survived it. However, moments later, somebody with a handheld grenade blew himself up next to the Tsar. So technically, it was an eighth assassination attempt that killed him. And he was he died in the winter palace uh, a few hours later so it's quite a misconception that the bomb itself uh, had killed alexander ii when he actually he survived and then got uh, killed by a grenade moments later but in the end seven official assassination attempts on his life led to the end of the reign of alexander ii and then came alexander the third <laughs> 